Today I'm going to talk you through what's new in the latest Conditionizer version 4 release. Uh, we've got some really, really nice public APIs made available uh, through the new release, which I'll just skim read here for you. Uh, there's the config module, which allows you to set up a, an asset path for all your browser changes. So if there's a, an IE6 bug or an IE8 bug that needs doing, uh, you might hold those specific files in path to my assets, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this will load in uh, ie6.js or ie6.css. So it depends on what you tell it to do. There's there's the tests uh, property, which you'll specify a, a Safari. You might need a script loading or a style loading or a class. Uh, that's a class name, by the way. Um, and then a script and a style. So these, are, these allow you to then have um, a, a class here called Safari, if Safari is in use. Uh, script source equals uh, path to my assets js safari.js so you might have a slight browser tweak in there or safari.css now these were these are part of the original conditionizer so we kept them in um, as it was a very popular tool what we've done now is enhanced it in a way where instead of loading in more css uh, style sheets you can use the the class api uh, not the api sorry the class name as a, a global override, so you don't actually need to load in external CSS assets. You might you might do dot safari space dot my class. Um, that's a really cool way to prevent more um, more browser requests when you're loading the page. So, how do we get to this stage? So how do how do we load con conditionizer to take Safari, and, t and how how do we tell it what to do? So, conditionizer add Safari. This, this this test here uh, proves true when the Safari browser is in use. So if you've got a, a quirk or a problem with Safari, you'll come and grab this test and you'll put it in your, in your code uh, and it will immediately be available um, with all our public APIs. So I'm actually using Chrome for this demo. So what I'll do is go to the Detects page, which is on a website, conditionizer.com slash detects. So you click on any of these and you can download them immediately because they auto select for you. So here's my demo page where I've got conditionizer specified up here. You'll notice it's actually in the head. Um, you're meant to load JavaScript right at the bottom of your page before the closing body tag. So ideally everything else goes here, conditionizer right at the top, let it run as fast as it can. Um, we're not actually manipulating any of the DOM, we're just loading style sheets and maybe um, giving a class here and there and doing some clever stuff later on in your code. So conditionizer as early as possible, try and make it available. Um, and even before you style sheets to get better results. So it's, it's 1KB minified, so it's, it's the tiniest, tiniest uh, script. So it's not going to impact on your page load at all. So here I've added a test called Chrome. So conditionizer is an object, which means it's publicly available absolutely anywhere so if you wanted to code using conditionizer you can then uh, grab it absolutely anywhere even if you're creating a plugin or some kind of script so those who aren't familiar with the console the console is how you can debug JavaScript so here I've got my object which I've just told it's log console.log conditionizer this will then give me the whole conditionizer object so I've got add config, load, on, polyfill, all the APIs on the home page, uh, which is back here. Config, uh, add, on, polyfill, and there's also load in there as well, which hasn't got heading because it's the same API. So Chrome is true here. This is one of our tests that we've just added, as you can see. Uh, and if I comment out this and refresh, Chrome won't be there because it's, it's not bolted into the object. So you can add absolutely anything to a test even if you wanted to test the presence of SVG. SVG is just a one-line detect so that makes it really easy. Um, what this means is if we've got a, a quirk in our JavaScript somewhere we might want to do a quick if statement right in the middle of our code whereas previous versions of Conditionizer didn't allow for this. It was just uh, a class name override style sheet and a JS but this allows you to develop with conditionizer right in the middle of your style sheet so it's uh, in your scripts so it's much much more powerful so here I can do a fancy old alert which everybody loves 
uh, if conditionizer.chrome, so we're using Chrome, we've got a test that runs when Chrome is there, I'll alert Chrome. So I'll, I'll hit save on that, refresh, Chrome, magic. So this allows us to do a lot of things which previously uh, there's there's no tool that allows you to do this this kind of modifications in line with your style sheets and your uh, JavaScript script style, script <laughs> script files. Uh, if we create a test for add add Safari, we could do if Chrome might be a slightly different implementation of the JavaScript language, or we'll just call it Chrome version. And if conditionizer dot Safari, it might be Safari version. So that's a really, really nice way to edit your stuff in line. The next API, which is really cool, uh, you've got conditionizer on. So you've probably seen it in jQuery, it's, it's on, it's when something is happening. So uh, on click, for instance, it would then fire this when, it's, when it's, it's clicked. So we're doing the exact same on Chrome. So we'll then create a quick anonymous function. If you want to reuse uh, functions, obviously don't create them anonymously here. So on Chrome, we'll have a callback, which we can do the exact same thing if we want it, Chrome. And refresh, got a nice JavaScript alert there. Well, they're not that nice, but you know what I mean. Um, we've also got the, the polyfill API. So the, the birth of conditionizer was because of this condition null statement. So conditionizer. Um, Obviously, a lot of pop popular plugins and scripts nowadays use the ISA. Um, so, conditionizer was to completely eradicate the use of um, polyfills. A polyfill is how to patch uh, a browser if if it's if it doesn't have a native functionality. So, we might provide it via JavaScript. Um, so, previously, you might do sort of your inline if statements. You know, sort of. If IE, if IE seven, blah blah blah, uh, and then you would create some some script tags and all that kind of thing. So that was really messy and looked really really ugly. So using the conditionizer polyfill API, I'm going to do it for Chrome here because obviously uh, we can actually test it in this demo. But what you would do is have, as I did before, so you might have IE eight, IE seven, IE six, and this is just an array. So you just tell it what you want, and it'll do it for all of those. So here we're going to do Chrome. This will load in HTML5 shiv .google code. Um, I'm working on local host, so I'll add the HTTP in. And then when I come to refresh, there's no console error or anything because it's the, the script actually exists. And there it is. So script source HTML5 shiv. That's dynamically loaded for us. So what we would then do, if you've, if it depends what browser you're supporting. So if you support IE8 and above, you'll just come on here, grab the IE8. Um, stick the test in. Doesn't I'm not suggesting that you do it in line like this. Have a have a file. Maybe put it in your conditionizer file or straight in another conditionizer hyphen config.js or something like that. Just so you can keep it separate. Um, so IE8 is is a test here. That's that's now in the conditionizer object. Uh, IE8 I can just tell it to do that. So when I refresh now, uh, actually let me console log the conditionizer object again. And what you'll do is be able to see that IE8 is in fact false. Um, right, there we go. So we've got Chrome is true, IE8 is false. So it's really, really easy to, to start developing with Conditionizer. Um, there's a lot of tests on here. There's IE6 all the way to 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. Uh, IE10 touch. Touch is, uh, you might... It's, it's a bit of a funny one because you, you, you might assume that you want to provide touch functionality um, to IE10 or, or vice versa, you don't want to provide touch. So this actually does both. This ignores uh, the IE mobile version and this looks for the IE, uh, the touch version. Um, IE11, that's recently been added, so um, they've completely changed the way that the Internet Explorer is detected, so we, we spent some time working on a just a, a really neat IE11 detect because these these things happen. We can't we can't feature detect everything, um, and there might be cross-platform issues. Um, speaking of cross-platform, uh, we were working on a project recently where Windows had a a problem in Chrome and the Macs didn't. 
uh, you've probably come across it before so I've just added a Windows test um, go back to my console log so I'm not on a Windows machine obviously uh, and what I can do is if I've got a problem in uh, conditionizer.windows and then you can use just the simple JavaScript operators uh, and you're in Chrome take it away with my changes there might be you might want to disable something or load in something specifically not for that um, and one of the, one of the really cool things is you can actually ignore environments with conditionizer so if, let me get rid of this if you're developing and just just want to completely ignore there is the not operator which is standard in JavaScript um, so we might put not windows in here function and you might want to load for Mac, Linux, etc. only. So this is a smart way where you can you can manage the the client requirements and, and work efficiently as a team. Um, going back to the polyfill APIs, there is one called load as well. So the load API is identical. We made a design decision on this one. So if you're loading the polyfill, which is patching browser functionality, you want to use the polyfill. If you're have you heard of Hammer.js? So you might actually want to load a, a touch facility for, let's just generalize and say iOS. So iOS will load Hammer. So this is just a load. So when you're working in a team or by yourself, you, you easily know that it's a polyfill or a load, uh, and it will make it easier with debugging. And, and if you've got several polyfills, for, for instance, if you're going back as far as IE6 and 7, you'll probably have a couple more than if you had just IE8. So that's, that's basically a roundup on Conditionizer, uh, all the latest APIs. You can head over to the documentation on the GitHub repo, uh, github.com slash conditionizer, and then you can find the Conditionizer repo there. This uh, gives you a, a more, more in-depth walkthrough than what I've just done and tells you how to configure pre-added tests. So if you wanted to add a script dynamically called firefox.js, you tell it script style class, etc., etc. And you can omit these if you don't need them, obviously. Uh, the add API, we've covered that. Um, have a read through. There's some inline dependency loading, so if you can load these inline if you don't want to use the config module. It just makes it things a little bit easier. Negative lookups, object testing, polyfill and load APIs. And at the bottom, we've got a basic setup. So if, if what I've shown you is a little bit um, confusing, then, then you, can, you can come here, grab this, uh, and then get developing. Everything's in a nice stacking order so you can have your callbacks and object tests there. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy the, the latest version of Conditionizer.